So check this out. So you guys may recall, I did a video a long time ago with my neighbor who's a master welder. He actually teaches people how to weld. This guy's really awesome. And he had some scrap metal laying around. I don't know if it was scrap, but I sent him a text message of the A-frame of the new trailer, the new Cargo Mate cargo trailer. And I wanna put a battery box on the front, but there was nothing there. So he fabricated this for me in a matter of, I don't know, like 20 minutes. Just put this together real quick very cool it is 16 inches up front and i believe we did 26 inches in the back but very cool he used angle iron all the way around and then used expanded metal right here to make the bottom portion it's pretty heavy definitely heavy duty uh, the first thing i did when i picked it up from him is i zinc coated the whole thing so it you know helps prevent it from rusting basically uh galvanizes it and then i hit it with some black high temp high gloss paint it's the first coat so it's still drying very very nice job though let me show you where it's going to go once it's dry and here's the portion of the trailer that it's actually going to go on i had to move the vin sticker to the side here and uh, yeah, it'll set right here in this space. It's almost perfect in terms of the measurement, but it fits exactly the way I need it to, to put the next thing I'm gonna put on here on. Um, that's still coming in, but very cool. But we went ahead and made it 11 inches deep, 16 in the front, 26 in the back. It'll overhang just a hair off the side, but it'll give me the space I need to be able to do what I'm gonna do next. Very cool, what are your thoughts? Definitely a interesting project and one that is gonna allow me to expand the trailer's flexibility a little bit greater than what it is today. Well, a lot of people wondered how the trailer looks behind my truck. It looks pretty good actually. And especially only being a 10 foot long trailer. It doesn't look super tiny behind the truck, but at the same time, look at the extra bed space I have now. I mean that, compared to that, it's crazy. And you know, one of the first upgrades you wanna do whenever you get a cargo trailer like this and you don't have an electric tongue jack up front is to put a drop leg on it. A lot of folks will look for an aftermarket tongue jack like this and hopefully they find one with a drop leg. But the benefit of this specific one and most of them on the market is as long as you get the two inch diameter tube, you can just buy the drop leg. It's usually about 20 bucks and it just slides directly into the bottom. I bought this one off of Amazon. Again, it was like 20, maybe $25. And then you simply unscrew this right here, it slides out put the jack leg underneath and slide it down. Now the problem I had was the bottom piece right here was actually crumpled up so they must have drugged the front tongue jack before I purchased it and I had to cut that off drill a new hole but it's very very simple so now all you have to do is pop the pin out and you can raise and lower this so you don't have to put a huge wooden block under this like I had when I first got the trailer. But yeah you just remove the three screws here it slides completely out position the uh, new drop leg underneath and lower this on top of it and now you have about probably 14 inches worth of additional space right here so you don't have to constantly be winding this thing down whenever you're trying to uh, disconnect your trailer or connect it to the truck. So that's what the jack foot looked like. Like this, this is where I cut it off. But yeah, it was all crumpled up. There's no way the uh, drop leg was gonna fit into that. But yeah, that's what I had to remove. It's about an inch, maybe a little bit more than an inch, inch and a quarter of material I had to remove. Still had plenty of slack, thankfully. And they just had to redrill the hole right there. But pretty easy task. Again, you know, some people do that accidentally. It actually had a foot that was installed on it at the bottom by the manufacturer, by the dealer, to kind of cover this up. I really wish they would have just replaced the tongue jack. They're only about $35, $40. Honestly, I don't think we could have loaded this thing up with more cargo if we tried. We have it loaded front to back and just about all the way to the top. I'm guessing we're probably right at about 1,500 pounds. So check that out. Very cool, huh? You can see the little white marks there where we aligned it. Perfect. That looks absolutely amazing. That's gonna be exactly what I need for the next project with the trailer. So you've probably figured out I'm gonna put a battery there, mainly because I wanna power some stuff inside of here. And I'd ultimately like to put a power front tongue jack on here. But the key is I need to make sure that I can charge the battery. So I'm gonna be doing something pretty interesting with this specific setup. Okay, so here is the finished product. He used a stick welding technique to get it all in place. He welded it on the four corners right here. So basically one here, one there, one there, and one there. Turned out really good. 
nice clean beads. Very impressed. So this is gonna come in really handy again. Uh, we did shift it forward slightly, so it's an inch away from here. It was about a half an inch before. The reason for that is because the battery box I'm putting on here actually has a much larger lid like most of them do, and I didn't want it rubbing up against this front diamond plate. My only concern and the reason why we originally had it back there further was because this handle, right? I didn't want the handle to, uh, to make contact with the box right here, but it all worked out really well. Something else I did was I got this Reese adapter here, which converts it from a four-way plug to a seven-way plug. I didn't really need that, but I hate pulling out these four-way plugs because they're usually not attached the very best possible way. So instead I put some dielectric grease, plugged it into this, and I can pull it out with the two handles right here. So that's really nice. But yeah, done a couple upgrades here. Of course, I got my Fort Knox locks up front. I have this really cool little tongue jack extension. It's a drop leg for the front tongue jack. And then I have my new battery box right here. Once we throw a battery on here, we're probably gonna upgrade to a power front tongue jack. I don't know which one. I actually have a couple of them in storage, so I'll probably pick one of those, connect it in, and then we'll start working on the stuff that's going on the inside of this trailer, as well as upgrading the tires. Let's take a look at the tires real quick. Though. So the Trans Eagle tires that I'm putting on have already come in. I just haven't gotten the wheels for them in yet, and they'll be replacing this setup. So these are ST20575 R15s. These are Rainier tires, and these are C load range tires. They are not designed to be a very heavy duty tire. They're six ply rating and they probably would be fine for this application. Believe it or not, I've done a lot of research on this tire on this type of trailer and most people are pretty happy with them. It's a pretty decent tire. We've towed a bit so far and you can definitely tell that these are softer tires. So they do add to the suspension of the trailer. Basically the sidewall of the tire acts as a giant airbag, just like airbags do. So. These are going to be okay. The tires that we're going to be putting on are far more robust. They're not going to flex nearly as much from the sidewall, but it will definitely be interesting to see what the difference is. Now, the wheels that they'll be going on are rated up to 85 or 90 PSI, so I should be able to load the tires up to their lowest PSI rating. I actually researched the manufacturer of the Trans Eagle tires, and it shows that some people under really light loads are airing them down to about 50 or 65 PSI, which I could potentially do but I'd like to get them a little bit closer to what their normal PSI rating would be on a higher load application. So I'm gonna load them up to probably about 80 PSI. I think that would be pretty safe for them. If you guys run Trans Eagle on your RVs or trailers, let me know what you air yours up to on a 15 inch rim. Now, the difference here is this is a five by four and a half inch lug pattern versus a six lug pattern that you see on a lot of travel trailers. So this is a really light duty axle. It's a 3,500 pound rated axle and the tires I'm putting on, each one of them are rated at like 4,000 pounds. So it's gonna be a significant bump in terms of the tire wheel assembly that's going on this trailer. But they're gonna look a lot better and they're gonna arguably last a lot longer, but we'll see. But yeah, if you've ran the Trans Eagle, let me know in the comments below. All right, so here are the Trans Eagle tires. Very cool setup. You can see that tubeless all steel radial. This is a 14 ply rated tire. So it is a G rated tire. 225, 75, 15s. Take a look at the sticker down here. ST radials. And these are the TA17A tires. You can see the 110 PSI. Load range G. Check that rib pattern out. Looks very, very similar to the 16 or 17 and a half inch style. It's a rib design, which means these are solid ribs that essentially run in a straight pattern. Very cool setup. They are extremely heavy tires. So the tires that are currently on here probably weigh about 25, maybe 30 pounds each or less. These tires probably weigh about 50 pounds each. So they're very, very heavy tires. Again, this is a significant step up. You can see there's still a little bit of sidewall flex when you press in on it. If that was a standard tire, I could probably fold the bead in with my hand. You can definitely see how thick the bead edge is right here. But a very, very cool setup. It's gonna be very interesting to see how these perform. Now, I am 100% aware that these will make the ride inside of this trailer stiffer. 
rougher, firmer. I get it. I completely understand and I know what I'm getting into by putting these tires on. I want to see what type of change it does make and I also want to see what happens when these are aired up to 65 to 80 psi. Like I said, I'm probably going to keep them around 80 psi, you know, but I'll experiment with it. I'll talk to the folks over at Trans Eagle and see what the very minimum I can run. The crazy thing is I could probably throw these on and even empty, they're not going to squat at all or they're not going to compress at all. So once we get these mounted up and we get them put on, again, we'll probably start at 80 psi and I'll have some room to kind of adjust them as needed. The only reason I don't go up to 110 PSI, honestly, well, two things. One, I won't ever need to. I mean, maybe 90 PSI the most, but the wheels themselves are rated to 90 PSI. So I don't want to go at the very maximum load rating of the wheel itself, but very cool tires. Now I may ultimately not keep these tires on. So the goal here is that if they work well and I'm happy with the performance and they're not showing excessive heat buildup or wear and tear, I'll keep them on. If they're not overly rough, I'll keep them on. But if for some reason they don't work well on this application, which they very well may not, I will likely switch to a different tire and probably go to like a D or maybe even an E load range tire and just, you know, put something a little bit more practical for this size of trailer. Because these are really designed for much larger applications, much larger travel trailers. Anyways guys, once the wheels come in, I get everything mounted up, we'll definitely have a better idea of how these are performing and of course I'll let you guys know. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.